know enough of that word of God tonight to be able to share it with somebody else and be a truth for somebody else. Could somebody in this church come to you and say, hey, I can trust you by teaching the word of God. If that's not you, then what are you doing about it? Continue on with John. We finished up first John, and we're going to be in second John tonight. We'll finish it up, and then we'll be in third John next week. And we'll finish up this epistle, all right? So turn to second John, please. And now, as you're turning there, I'll be giving you a little background while we're getting there. Uh, we started this series back in September. Uh, the Lord had put on my heart to go through the epistles of John, and I'm so glad we did. And uh, because it's written to the church, it's written to the brethren. And we have chewed on so much meat that uh, I don't think any of us can handle anymore, amen? Uh, but we're going to get some more meat tonight out of 13 verses. And I pray tonight you learn something, because I know I learned something in a few, uh, especially in verse number 8 I learned something. And uh, you'll see it tonight. But uh, if we continued on with this thing. We've been rocking on a Wednesday nights. So God's really been blessing it. Uh, it I, I'm doing more of a teaching style. I'm still preaching, but I'm doing more teaching than I normally would on a Sunday morning. And God's really been blessing it. It's really been helping our church and everything. So I'm still praying about what I'm going to do when we finish this up. I'm not sure if I'm going to go into another uh, small epistle or another book of the Bible. I'm not sure. Uh, but I will be praying about it. And so uh, make sure you're here on Wednesday nights to keep up with it and everything if you can be here. Uh, but uh, once again, uh, we're in Second John tonight. And the whole theme for Second John is truth. All right? Truth. And uh, a lot of people don't know what truth is anymore. And, uh, and it's been around a long time. And God is truth, and we know that Jesus Christ is truth, and we know His Word's truth tonight, all right? Uh, but a lot of people think truth is something else. Uh, but tonight, me and you is going to see what truth is, and we're going to see why it's so important to have truth, amen? And uh, let's look at Second John. We're going to read through the verses real quick, and then we'll get into this thing. Verse number 1. The elder unto the elect lady and her children, whom I love in the truth... And not, uh, not, uh, not only, I'm sorry, and not I only, but also all they that have known the truth for the truth's sake. All right, you see that? For the truth's sake, which dwelt in us and shall be with us forever. You notice that right there? It says, shall be with us forever. Truth never goes away. No matter what our generation is trying to tell us, and no matter what they're trying to tell us is right and wrong, now, truth is forever. All right, grace be with you, mercy and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ and the Son of the Father in truth and love. I rejoice greatly that I found thy children walking in truth as we have received a commandment from the Father. And now I beseech thee, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto thee, but that we had from the beginning that we love one another. There's that again, loving one another. And uh, let's see, and this is love that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment that as ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full reward. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. It's that simple. If there's people out there preaching and teaching false doctrine and they're doing all these things and they're not teaching the things of the Bible and they're not teaching that Jesus is the only way, they are not our friends and they are not a part of what we're trying to do. They hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ hath both the Father and the Son. And there come any unto you and bring not this doctrine. Receive him not into your house, neither bid him God speak. For he that biddeth him God speed is partaker, partaker of his evil deeds. Having many things to write unto you, I would not write with paper and ink, but I trust to come unto you and speak face to face that our joy may be full. The children of thy elect sister greet thee. Amen. Tonight, real quick, we're going to get into this thing because I, I got a lot to preach. But I pre I'm preaching on for the truth's sake. For the truth's sake. We sing that in verse number 2. For the truth's sake. You can't have all truth and no love. You can't all have all love without truth. We've got to be balanced. Somebody say amen. amen. And there's a lot of people out there that ain't balanced. There's a lot of people running around that don't know nothing about the Word of God. Not They'll believe any phony baloney that comes to their house or anybody on the TV. And I'm here tonight to tell you for the truth's sake. Say, why is it so important? 
how did you get here tonight? And I don't mean by your vehicle. And I don't mean by somebody brought you. I said, how did you get here tonight? Spiritually. Because people before us and before them and before them cared enough about doctrine, cared enough about the truth, cared enough about the gospel to get it over to America that one day a church would be planted that you would get saved in. But if we keep on going like we're going and not worried about truth and worried about teaching our kids the Bible and all these things, before too long we're going to have a generation that knoweth not God. Mm. I, oh, man. I can see right now it's going to be a, a hard one. Amen. This is one of these sermons where I give myself amens, all right? For the truth's sake, I want you to notice the practices. I got four practices right here that we should be doing for the truth's sake. I want you to notice number one. Providing the truth. Mm, providing the truth. Look at the group. Verse number one. The elder unto the elect lady and her children whom I love in the truth, and not only uh, not I only, but also all they that have known the truth. Now I'm about to do some teaching right here, all right? John the Apostle right here, who was now a very old man, he's, they, they believe he's about 90 years old, he gives the title of an elder instead of an apostle, not because of his status, just because he was very old, all right? And, they, and he uses the term prebister or elder, not in the name of an office, but designating his advanced age, all right? So we have elder in the Bible also. That sometimes uh, represents an office in the church. But let me help you with something out, young people tonight. These older people in the Lord are your elder. Amen. Say Amen. All right. Sometimes they try to tell you things not because they want to make you mad or angry. It's because they done messed up and somebody older than them at one time told them some things to change. Amen. I want to throw that out there tonight. All right. We got to be teachable. Amen. But not every critic is trying to help everybody. We'll, we, we'll learn about that later. Right? Look at this. And, uh, and, 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 he, and he, was, uh, he was an apostle. Right? And it says here to the elect lady and her children. All right, there's a couple theories on this. Perhaps this was an individual Christian woman John wanted to warn and encourage by this letter, or the term might be symbolic way of addressing this particular congregation. This phrase, however, more likely to be a personification than a person, not the church at large, but some local church over which the elders' jurisdiction was recognized, her children being the church's individual members. Also, one of my commentaries said this. He said, this appears to have been some noted person. Uh, wait, this is one guy said this. This might have been uh, some noted person, both her singular piety and rank in the world, made imi uh, imitate, uh, I can't even understand that word, capable of having great influence for the support of Christian interests. Hang on. And, but also, John probably did not name himself, the elect lady, or her children by name because this was written during a time of persecution. Perhaps John did not want to implicate uh, anyone by name in, the, in a written letter. If the letter was in, in, intercepted and the authorities knew it was written to by name, it might mean death for that person too. So many of my commentaries, they're not, most of them were not sure if this was written to a local New Testament church or if these were written uh, to some members in the church or if this was a select lady that might have been having her church in her house and had children. Either way, it still applies to us. Amen? Okay, because the preacher's going to apply it to all of us tonight, all right? Uh, it, it's, not a, it's not a doctrinal issue or anything like that. We can say it's the church or we can say it's the lady. It's still going to, the way I preach it tonight, it's going to apply to you. Say amen. amen, all right? I want you to notice the group, though. It says the elect lady, we're talking, it, let's just apply it to us. He's writing to the church. He's writing about the children. He's talking about the members. And he said, whom I love in the truth, and not only I, and not, I keep messing this up, and not, I only, but also all they that have known the truth. Can I tell you, this is a local New Testament Baptist church here, but there's several independent local New Testament church scattered all out through the world. And not only you and I are supposed to be friends and love each other and be in the truth, but the church universal, whoever it is, we should all love each other and be in the same mind and in the truth. Amen. But also all they that have known the truth. What is the truth tonight? Jesus, the Word of God. Mm. The guarantee, verse number 2. Preach fast. For the truth's sake, which dwelleth in us and shall be with us forever. Hmm. For the truth's sake means a defense of the truth. We need to recognize that the truth needs to be defended. We need to stand for the truth of God and for the Word of God. The word truth is mentioned five times in 13 verses here. I want to show you a few verses about truth. Watch this. Put it up there, Ms. Patsy. Jesus saith unto them, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh to the Father but by me. So right there, that tells me that Jesus is truth. Next verse. Watch this. Sanctify them through thy word. Thy word is 
truth. So not only is Jesus the truth, but the Word of God you have in your hand is truth. I got to do it tonight, though. This church believes in the King James Bible. This is, I, this is what I preach out of. Any man that stands behind this pulpit, that's what he'll preach out of. And anybody that teaches will teach out of the King James Bible. And not if you don't have a King James Bible, that's between you and God. But I will say this, that not every Bible is the Word of God. You can go download a, uh, a translation uh, Bible that will compare other Bibles with Scripture and a lot of Bibles take a lot of the Scriptures out that King James still has. All right, I'll just say the night. I believe we got the true Word of God. Amen. All right, in English. Next. All right, and I will pray the Father and He shall give you another comforter that He may abide with you forever. Who are we talking about? The Holy Spirit, all right? I'm sorry. Y'all, no wonder y'all got y'all's eyes closed. You can't hardly see the screen. There, is that better? All right. Now, I won't be able to read, but it'll be all right. So, let's see. He's also given us the Spirit of truth. That is the Holy Spirit of God. Now, watch. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. Let me help you with something. Your sister, your so-and-so, your auntie, your grandma, your nene, whoever it is in your family, if they have not been saved, they do not have the Holy Spirit, so don't get mad when they don't understand the Bible. And when they don't understand why you're at church three days a week or when you keep giving money to the church and why you always want to do something with the church and get the gospel out because they ain't never been saved. Right. If you're sitting in here tonight and you ain't got none of them desires, then I'd say you're not saved. Yeah. Amen. Amen. If I have to beg you to come to church and get you fired up about preaching and teaching and singing, you might need to check yourself when you wreck yourself. Amen. Verse 18. And I will not leave you comfortless... I will come to you. He came to us through the Holy Spirit of God. Mm. Uh, do I have some more scripture? Yes, I do. Ooh, hey, look there. Man, I love being able to just give scripture, all right? How be it when he... I got to get closer. I can't see this. It's blurry, all right? How be it when he, the Spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak, and he will show you things to come. Next verse. He shall glorify who? Me, who's speaking? Jesus is speaking. She can't put them in red because it wouldn't show up on the screen. So anything in yellow tonight is Jesus speaking, okay? For he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. Next. I'm thinking there's one more verse. Is that it? Okay, that's it. All right, that's all y'all need for right now, okay? All right. We need a new projector screen. Somebody say amen. I think we done burned this one all out, all right? Mm. So not only is Christ the truth, not only is God's word the truth, but the truth is supposed to be living inside of you tonight shall be with us forever. Truth does not change. The truth will be true forever, and we will have the truth forever in eternity. Many people today think that the truth changes from age to age and from generation to generation, but the Bible knows that the truth shall be with us forever. Amen. For the truth's sake, which dwelleth in us, shall be with us forever. Jesus said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but thy word is settled in heaven. Amen. Psalmist wrote, he said, Thy word have I hid in thy heart that I might not sin against thee. Mm. Not, only the, not only the guarantee, but the gift. Verse 3. Grace be with you, mercy and peace from God the Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father. In truth, there's that word again, but it ain't just truth. What else? Love. Amen. I want to read this quote I found. It's kind of long, but it's good. A man named Lewis Sperry Schaefer. Chaffer. Something. Amen. He did, all right? Let's see. Love is God, all right, which existed before he would care to exercise mercy or grace. Listen. Love is the nature of God. It is what is called an attribute of God. Look at that, Miss Linda. I said attribute, right? Amen. I said attribute. Amen. God is love, but the interesting thing is that the love of God never saved a sinner. Now, hang on. Watch. This is good. The love of God calls God to move in the direction of mercy and grace and calls Him to exercise mercy and grace. Now the question arises, what's the difference between mercy and grace? Mercy, on the other hand, is that in God which duly provided for the needful of sinful man, God is rich in mercy. Why is He rich in mercy? Because He is love. And because God is love, He by mercy provided the need of sinful man. But mercy didn't save man. Grace is that in Him which acts freely to save because all the demands of holiness have been satisfied. God is free to act in grace. I know that was a little bit for y'all to understand, but look what I got for Scripture too. Back it up. 
Ephesians 2. Man, my eyes, man, I can't see nothing. No, I'm good. They may be too strong. But God, watch, watch, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us. Next verse. Even when we were dead in sins, let me help you with something tonight. You weren't born and automatically saved. Just because you were born in the church, your mama had you in the church, you was raised on the church pew, come on. And just because you've been to church, you served in church, your name's on a membership roll since you was one years old, does not make you a Christian. You were dead in sin and trespasses. Hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace, ye are saved. Want to help somebody else tonight? Your baptism didn't save you. Your church membership won't save you. Come on, Mm, on, verse 6. He, I'm sorry, and hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Boom, shakalaka. Brother Raul, tonight I may be physically with you tonight, but already in eternity I am sitting in heavenly places because of Christ Jesus. Don't matter how many people get saved. I'm going to be judged for it. We'll see that in a little bit. But I, when I got saved, I was already in the heavenlies. Mm. Verse 7. That in the ages to come, He might show the exceeding riches of His grace and His kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Nothing, if we would just realize that ain't nothing we done, we just have to believe in what He's done. He's done everything. Verse 8. For by grace are you saved through faith and not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. Not of works, least any, yeah, not of works, lest any man should boast. Verse 10. For we are His workmanship created in Christ Jesus under good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. I need to preach a sermon on that. Mm. I don't do good works to be saved. I do good works because I got saved. Mm. God help us. Amen. Do you know the truth good enough to teach others tonight? See, I I put my first point. Let me go back and say, yeah, providing the truth. Do you tonight, as a Christian, know enough of that word of God tonight to be able to share it with somebody else and be a truth for somebody else? Could somebody in this church come to you and say, hey, I can trust you by teaching me the Word of God tonight? If that's not you, then what are you doing about it? What are you doing about it? We give a Bible college around here. We do do, uh, Sunday school. I'm I'm trying to get the discipleship program going. I got all these classes I teach for you to know more truth. What's holding you back from learning more of the Word of God? Amen. Mm. Amen. I say it for everybody. Amen. You don't know the Word of God tonight. It's your fault, not mine. You got every opportunity to learn more about the Lord. By the, there's so much going on around here. Amen. Another practice we need to look at is performing the truth. Not only should we provide it, but we need to perform the truth. I want you to see the statement in verse 4. I rejoice greatly that I found thy children walking in truth as we received a commandment from the Father. I want you to notice this. I rejoice greatly. This is a pastor's heart to know that his people are walking in truth. While truth is not the only concern of a pastor, it is great. It is a great concern, and it is a great comfort for a pastor to see those he loves and cares for walking in truth. Mm. The children mentioned here can either be her own children, like we said, or might be members of a church. Mm. Warren Wisby said this. He said, "How important is it for parents to teach their children to love the truth?" While we thank God for Sunday schools and, and Christian day schools, but in the final uh, analysis, it is the home that must instill in children's a love for truth and the knowledge of God's truth. Amen. Mama, Daddy, I'm not even going to look at none of you. It ain't my job to teach your children. The Sunday school teacher, they're doing their part. They get them for 45 minutes a week. It's what you're doing at night and at home and taking the Word of God and doing devotions with them and praying with them and teaching them truth. Because let me help you something. The public school system, they're indoctrinating them and they're not giving them the truth. They're teaching them about Scientology. They're teaching them about uh, the Big Bang Theory. They're teaching them that it's all right to have sex before marriage. You you have to get a doctor's note to get an aspirin, but you can get a condom. I'm trying to tell you tonight is this, is that this world is wicked and they're going to keep teaching our children everything that Satan wants them to learn, but it's you and our job to defend our house and our children. You get one chance. And there's mamas and daddies in here that will tell you, don't mess up like I did. We can have them testify all night. They're not bad people. They're not horrible people. But they will still tell you, I wish I could have done things different. 
learn and do something about it. If you don't want better for your children, then why are you a parent tonight? It's all right to teach little Jimmy to hit baseball, but we need to hit, teach little Jimmy to hit a home run for Jesus. Yeah. If all I ever teach Lacey is how to run a football and catch a baseball and do all the things my daddy taught me, I have done nothing. I, I have done just what my daddy done with me. And guess what? When you stand before Jesus Christ, I'm not going to be there to hold your hand and say, hey, I did my best. You're going to be, man, I'm teaching to the men tonight. Men, you are going to stand before the Lord and give an account for your wife, for your children, for your finances, for how you provided for them, everything. And she's going to be judged on how she supported you. That's it. That's it. It says wives submit to the husband and husbands love the wives. And God said Jesus is the head of the house. He's the head of the church and then the man. That tells me, woman, all you got to do is follow your man and love him and submit to him. And it's on us men to how we handle our houses. See, some of you young people that's just getting married. <clears throat> God's going to hold us to a higher standard. Mm. Mm -mm. A pastor's heart. When I do log on to Facebook, a lot of times I get right back off because I see all your junk. Very rarely do I see, it's usually the same ones that share things about the church, they share scriptures, very, just very few handful of people. And most of the rest of the people, they share all their junk and their, they hate Biden, they hate Trump, they hate this, they hate politics, they hate this and hate that. When's the last time you got on Facebook and supported your church? When's the last time you got there and gave God some glory? When's the last time you posted some scripture? When's the last time you invited somebody on social media instead of just keep da 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 as a pastor, I don't sit at home and I'm like, thank God they're living like the devil. No, I weep and I cry and I ask Logan, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? I'll sit up there and I'll tell her, what am I doing wrong? I preach my heart, I preach my guts out, I give them everything I can and people still stay the same. Boy, I, I knew it. I'll say amen. Amen! Amen! What if we started taking the preaching and actually applying it to our lives Maybe our marriages would get better. Maybe our children would have some more respect. Maybe we start living some holy lives like God's already told us to do. Maybe we'd actually start getting more people to church. If all you do is come in and week in and week out and get mad at the preacher and get mad at this and get mad at that and fold your arms and go to sleep and whatever the case may be, I don't care who you are tonight. I'm sick and tired of it. It's time for us to live for God. He's coming back. And I'm telling you right now in 2 John at the end it says some of us are going to be ashamed of how we're living. Are you going to be ashamed when he comes back? Are you going to be one of them that's excited and looking for that blessed hope because you've been living for him? Mm. I'm maybe probably thinking right now, man, down the road they don't preach like that. They tell me everything I want to hear. Mm. I'm not that preacher because I'm about to show you in just a minute I'm going to give an account for everything I say from the pulpit. Let's move on. Not only the statement but the submission. Yeah, it gets better. Look at this, verse number 5. Now I beseech thee, lady, not as though I wrote a new commandment unto you, but that which we had from the beginning, that we love one another. And this is love that we walk after his commandments. This is the commandment that as ye have heard from the beginning, ye should walk in it. Mm. Christian love is an act of the will. It simply means treating other people the same way God treats you. In fact, it is possible to love people that we do not like. What if God treated us like we treated Him? I want to say it, but I can't handle it, Lord. <laughs> what if we treated God? Oh no, what if God really treated us the way we treat Him? I mean, really, what if? Like, you know how we never pray to Him unless we need something? What if He never listened unless He wanted to hear something? Come on. Yeah. What if, what if, 
you know, we're so bad about not wanting to give to God, and He just finally, you know, didn't give us any money at all, but He still, come on. But what if we treated people the way God treats us? How much of a difference could we make for the cause of Christ? What if I treated my wife the way God treats me? How much better would my marriage be? Now, we're not comparing ourselves with God. We know that, but that was a good little note that I got from one of my commentators. That God, he said, God, the reason why he gives these commandments is because he really wants us as brethren to love each other like he loves us. Amen. Amen. How many churches hate each other? I mean, why, can I help y'all with something? Do you know why there's 900,000 denominations? Because this guy and this guy couldn't get along, so this guy started a new church. All right? Do you know why there's 900,000 Baptist churches? Because this guy and this guy couldn't get along, so he went and started his own church. All these churches around here, you do the research. I bet money why there's only 10 and 15 and some of them. It's because they were from church splits. Because they could not get along. Amen. What if, for once, a Baptist church fully got along, when somebody got mad at one another, knew how to get right, Knew how to just say it's nothing. It don't mean nothing. In eternity, it ain't going to mean nothing. Let's keep moving on. Yeah. Are you walking around with some bitterness tonight towards somebody that you still ain't forgave them? And it's been a year in this church. We've already had revival. We did all these things. But you still just said, you know what? I'm going to hang on to this just for a little bit longer. If you can love lost people more than you can love the people that sit in this room tonight, there's something wrong with you. Amen. There's something wrong with you. Mm. I said, man, I don't even know what my point was, but I think it was something about the truth. It was something about truth. It was performing the truth. Mm. Are you performing the truth in your life tonight? Protecting the truth. This is why I like going through the book of the Bible because I can't, you know, I can't really, you know, we got to go right through it. Amen. Let's see, protecting the truth. The deceitful. Yeah, verse 7. Look at this. For many deceivers are entered into the world. Who confess not that Jesus Christ is coming to flesh? This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Now, this is meaning more of the spirit of an antichrist. In John's day, they had these guys called not the schism, and I may not even be saying it right. What it was, these guys were going around saying that Jesus could not be fully God and fully man and have lived on earth. And they were teaching all this and trying to get people to go astray. They were false teachers. Now fast forward it, 2020. Now we got all these false teachers that have these mega churches. And everybody thinks because their churches are full, they must be God's servants. But can I help you? The Bible says that even uh, Satan's ministers are angels of light. And I'm here to tell you that most of these guys on TV ain't really true born again believers. Somebody say amen. And you better be careful who you're listening to outside of this church. If they never preach on sin and they ain't preaching from the right Bible, you better be careful. Because for too long you'll be like, man, Pastor Trent, man, he really ain't, mm, no, just ain't the same anymore. And you've been listening to this guy. You done allowed a little deceiver to come creep into your heart and creep into your ear. Amen. This right here, saying that they haven't come in the flesh, that should be the first thing that indicates the Antichrist or the deceiver. There's many other things that should throw up red flags. We're going to get into it in just a second. I'm preaching fast. I've been trying to preach and end, y'all, before y'all have to take the kids home. I've been trying, all right? The deceitful but the defense. Verse 8, look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought, but that we receive a full roll of Brother Tim Booth. I have never seen this verse, and I got all this thing highlighted. I have studied this way before I even preached to this, done been through all this, and I never seen this verse. Have you ever done that? You've already studied it, you've already seen it, you've already read it, but you've never seen a verse? Watch. It's good. Look to yourselves means to beware to take heed. If we follow or if we allow false teachers and false teaching, we are in jeopardy of losing our rewards, the things we have worked hard for, for Jesus. I'm about to show you. False teachers offer something you do not have when in reality they take away what you already have. They come in, they tell you all these things and they're usually very nice and usually put well put together and they say all these things and they do all this and they're false teachers. And it says right here, I did never seen this, but it says if we don't take heed, if we don't watch out, 
that we lose not those things that we have wrought. That means things that we've worked for. And we know that one day we're going to be judged. And it says that so we can receive a full reward. That tells me when we entertain false teachers and preachers and all this, we're liable to lose rewards in heaven. I've never seen this before. I'm going to go into some more detail. I'm quoting church members. I've said this for a reason. I'm quoting. I got this from another guy. Church members need to respect the work of a faithful pastor or teacher and do everything that do everything to protect it and extend it. God's servants must one day give an account for their ministries. Say, uh uh-uh. uh. Yeah, I do. Watch. Hebrews 13 17, 13 17. Obey them that have rule over you and submit yourselves. Woo! That means if you're way older than me tonight, you're still supposed to submit yourself to me because I got spiritual authority over you. Hang on. For they watch for your what? Souls. As they must give an account that they may do it with joy and not with grief. Let's take a time out right here. Have you been... Ooh. Are you a person in here that has caused me grief? Or have you been one of them that's caused me joy? Only you should answer that. I wouldn't tell everybody, but... See, just like the man's the head of the house, Jesus is the head of this church, but Jesus and God actually put a 33-year-old man to be your shepherd, the under-shepherd to the shepherd, and he's going ju- to judge me one day for everything that I've spoken and everything that I've done in this ministry. He ain't going to judge you. Now, he'll judge you if you're a teacher and all these things. He's going to not judge you what goes on in this church. He's going to judge me. But what he's going to do is he's going to judge you unless how you've caused me grief, or if you've caused me joy. So tonight, you can be one of them that's been causing grief, and you can turn it around and be one of them that can help give me some joy, and let's keep on doing this thing together. And if you're one of them that's been doing joy, don't never go back. Don't turn to grief. Let's keep going in joy together. Because I believe God's going to judge you just like God's going to judge me how I submitted Robbie Harrington at Calvary Baptist Church. God's going to judge you. Why? Because that's what the Bible teaches. Mm. Sometimes I, I, I better do it. Well, da, 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 da. well listen, I won't help you not. I've said it since I got here two years ago. We're going on my third year. God's still blessing. God's doing great things. There's so many people in this church that are so thankful for what God's doing. If you're one of the one out of 900,000, there ain't that many people here, but... <laughs> that don't like what's going on, don't like the way the vision's going, and don't like the things that we want to do, there's 900 other Baptist churches in the area, and I promise you they would love to have you as a member. I don't want you to leave, but I don't want you to stay and cause all of us grief. Amen! Amen. Amen. Joel Osteen won't tell you that, all right? (laughs) Remember, we will all stand at the judgment seat of Christ. Now, I wasn't going to talk about me and not talk about you anymore. Now, look, 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 2 Corinthians 5. For we must all. Now that word in the Greek means all. Before the judgment seat of Christ, that everyone may receive the things he's done in his body according to that he's done, whether it be good or bad. This ain't, this ain't salvation. It's the works. This is the crowns. This is the things you're going to be judged with. It's going to be judged with fire. He's going to judge you for everything. He's going to judge you for the times that the preacher was preaching and the invitation was going and you were sleeping and not praying for somebody to get saved. He's going to judge you for while I'm doing it and giving an invitation you get up 15 times to go pee. Come on. He's going to judge us for the things we've done, whether they're good or bad. And I promise you, anything you do as a Christian that keeps somebody from going to heaven, you're going to be judged for it. Amen. And it could be in this church or outside, but you better be careful and start taking God serious. He's going to judge you. The time for invitation ain't time to go pee and do all these things. It's time for you to get down here. Every time we meet, there's somebody lost in here. Every time. And I'm giving invitation, people. God help us. You know why I'm doing all this? Because I can't do it on a Sunday morning. I'm teaching. You need a backbone. That's what Miss, uh, Melissa always says. When's that backbone? Well, backbone, guess what? You're going to get some teaching tonight. Amen. Amen. See, it's amazing to me if, you're, if one of your granddaughters or kinfolk or somebody you know is lost comes in, I'll, I'll watch you. You'll be, you'll be down there crying. 
But if it's, not, if it's just a normal service, cowboys are on, they're going to lose, but I'm ready. <laughs> Brother Charles said those fighting words. <laughs> Do you take your Christian walk seriously or is it just a joke? See, the thing is, we know that they, we, we know that we can't lose our salvation. It tells us that your, your works may be burned up, but you, you can't lose your salvation. But I will tell you this, you will lose your place in the kingdom. I've been studying more about uh, in Revelation in the millennium. Also, the things you do here it affects, it determines on where you're going to be in the millennial kingdom one day and eternity. It sure does. I'm not saying this to beat you up tonight, but I'm telling you, do you take your salvation serious? Do you take the truth serious? Everything that we do, it's going to affect somebody. The discernment, verses 9 through 11. This is good. Mm. Whosoever transgresses and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. You see that? They don't know it. Okay? He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. And if there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine... Now watch, receive him not into your what? House. Don't have him in to drink red, uh, big red. All right, or Bill Miller sweet tea. Neither bid him what? That basically means farewell, bye bye, whatever you want to say it. For he that biddeth him, uh, biddeth him God's speed is what? Partaker of his. I had a Jehovah's Witness come to my house when I was living at this little house over here. And they busted my water pipe, man. They came in with their big old jacked up Mercedes van, probably a $100,000 van, man. And uh, the thing about these, man, what's crazy about these false teachers and preachers, man, they, they better than the Baptists now. They're not like the Baptists that like to hold on to the money now. Oh, this my money, amen. They help, man, they'll give every dollar to the cause of their false god, amen. And, uh, man, they have the best fans. They have the best little suits when they ride their bicycles. All these things. And we get the Baptists, we're like, hey, we need to get some, uh, some prayer cards back. How much that going to be? Is that in the budget? Come on. <laughs> But they spend it every now and they got to send people to hell. We know the truth. Boy, we got, you know, that's all I ever hear about money. I hate talking about money. God help me. And uh, anyways, that's why I get Brother Robert to talk about money now in the church. Amen. And so, uh, man, they came to my house and, uh, and, and, and they came up there and this lady got out. I've told this story before. She had this long dress on. She was nice. She was put up good. I mean, she, she had it together. And uh, I knew right off the bat that she was Jehovah Witness. I just knew it. And when she got out, this little 13, 14-year-old little girl got out, dressed in a dress, nice, sweet as she could be. And she said, hey, I want to talk to you about this and that. And I said, okay. And then she started talking to me, and every time she'd say a verse, I'd, I'd quote a verse. She'd say this, I'd quote another verse. And then I'd say this, I'd quote another verse. And I'd say, and I'd say show me, show me, I said, show me John chapter number one in your Bible. Okay. And uh, she showed me, and I said, it says, and, uh, and, and the Word of God uh, was with God, and it was a God. And so the Jehovah Witnesses believe. They believe all kinds of crazy stuff. They believe only 144,000 people are going to go to heaven. Which they've already surpassed that, so now they're trying to change their doctrine to get some more people in heaven. And also they believe that Jesus is a little g-god that God created him. So when you say that, you just took the deity away from Jesus. That means he can't save you anymore if he was a created God. Okay? So I'm sitting there and I'm witnessing to them and she's trying to witness to me. And she said, you must be a Baptist. I said, yes, ma'am, I'm the pastor of the church right down the road. I said, matter of fact, if you'd like to know how to get to heaven, I'll tell you right now. Amen. And she said, I used to be a Baptist, but I know the truth now. I said, no, matter of fact, you're a false teacher, you're a deceiver, and you're knocking on all these people's doors and you're sending people to hell. And I said, the Bible tells me not to even bid you Godspeed. I said, so if you will, leave. And I said, little girl, I don't know you. I said, but you're, I said, this is a cult. I said, right in front of me. I said, it's a cult. I said, you're not going to heaven. You're going to die and go to hell. I said, but I can show you how to get to heaven. And she just followed that lady along. They got in the thing. They bang, bang, tore my water, my water pipe up and then left. They left and then I left later on. They were hitting every door. Hey, Miss Patsy, let's get a slide made. In two weeks, let's meet up here. At 9 o'clock, we're going to go out soul winning. Three people show up. Hey, 
hey, we're going to do this. We're going to have a rat. We're going to have a burger in the back because we're trying to raise money for the youth group, but we're also going to pass tracks out. But you always have something planned to do when you've been known for three months we're going to do this, but when it comes time to do it, oh, I got plans. You know why they work their tail off? Because that's how they're told they're going to heaven. Baptists know we're going to heaven when we die. Ain't nothing we can do. And we become... I don't know what's going to make you want to give, give your life fully to the Lord. I believe we can bring the best evangelists in. We can bring the best singing in. We can do everything in the world to get you to have a fire for God. If the Word don't fire you up, you know you're not going to go to heaven when you die. Knowing that God has saved you, all these promises you've been given, if it doesn't excite you to want to tell somebody about Jesus, then why do you come to church? Why are you a part of this church? Why are you even a Christian? If you got saved and that was it, you should have went on to heaven. You should have checked out like ain't it. Woo! But you got saved. Because he wants you to tell people about him. Amen. And I love y'all tonight, and I really do, but man, we got to have truth, man. We got to have love, but we got to have truth. Lastly, are you standing tall for the truth tonight? I'm finished. But I got one more point, I'm finished. Are you standing tall for the truth tonight? Or are you one of them that you believe anything and everything that comes your way? Proclaiming the truth. Lastly, that's my last point, proclaiming the truth. Miss Patsy, put some invitation music on, please. I want you to notice the comfort. It, is it hot in here? Yes. Don't ever complain about it again. Because Sunday it will be 64. Amen. The comfort. Verse 12 and 13. Look now. <laughs> I love y'all. Amen. I really do. But Look. Having many things to write unto you, I would not write with paper and ink. Now, look, guys, when they translated this, they put paper and ink. Now, back in John's days, it was still scrolls. All right. Now, watch. But I trust to come unto you, look, and speak face to face, that our joy may be what? Time out. Not only are we supposed to do all these things and practice the truth, but you should also want to be part of the truth. I've been saved by the truth. I got the truth. We got the truth living inside of us. And I thank God every time you walk in because I get to see you face to face and get to share the same things that's going on. Do you love church? Amen. Not the building, but do you love the people? Amen. Do you miss the ones that used to sit over here beside you and they hadn't come back because of COVID, but they said they still want to come back? One? Does it grieve you that you ain't seen their face in so long? He said, you know what? I could keep writing. I could keep texting you a text. I could do all these things. He said, but you know what? I'm going to wait because I can't wait to see you face to face. Are you one of them that you could care less to see the brethren? Matter of fact, you're thankful for the six feet apart. But me, you know what? I like to see you face to face. Because you know why? Because my joy may be full. Whether you believe this or not, you bring me joy during the week. I hope I bring you joy through the Word. And as you pass, I hope. Some things I preach, it's hard for you to swallow. I know, but once you swallow it, it'll make you better. But you bring me joy tonight. The children of thy elect sister, greet thee. Amen. It says... Children of thy elect sister, and some of them still believe he's talking about another church. Whether or not he's talking about a church or a person, it still applies to us. For the truth's sake. I gave you a lot. I don't know. I don't know if you got any help tonight, or if you're struggling with one area or not. I don't know. Only you know. But one day, every one of us is going to die. If the Lord ain't came back, he may come back. We don't know. We're supposed to be looking for His coming. But you and I are going to die. What are we going to leave behind? What am I leaving behind for Langston? What's Langston going to leave behind one day? I hope that I leave truth and love and everything that God's done for me, I hope He carries it on. I hope one day I pass the torch and He keeps on carrying it. If we're not careful, our torch 
fall. Living generation. Don't want to have nothing to do with God. Living generation. Don't have nothing to do with the Word of God. You and I can stand tall tonight because we know the truth. Are we going to continue in the truth or are we going to proclaim the truth?